Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 17. I'm Andy, and this is the let's play on the Coldbird Park slash Cotland Farms map. So um, we has have started mowing uh, our nice little fields here. So the mower is going in there, mowing way, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, we have our massy set up for mowing, basically. And we're going to use our uh, Ford here too. No, New Holland. Sorry, it's in New Holland uh, to tether this, and then we're going to window it, and then we're going to start baling. Um, I got this nice cool add-on which was, I think if you watched it, my channel yesterday, uh, I did a review on it. It's the Tanko 11510 auto wrapper, which is basically um, an attachment for a f telehandler or a front loader or uh, some stuff, or a tractor for that, for that uh, in that case. And basically it, it wraps while collecting you can c pick up the bales with a telehandler and then it wraps them while you're lifting them which is a brilliant thing and it actually really uh, exists in real life we just google uh, tank or okay, go to youtube and look uh, search for tanko auto wrapper or tanko 1510 or 15 or tanko 1310 or something and you will find it uh, videos of it and it's pretty cool actually it's very cool basically uh, so that's a tip uh, the link to that is in the uh, description down below as always otherwise it's nice to get started with the grass and the hay production we have some hay and grass, so it's not a problem, but it's nice to get going, start saving up for winter. And I think, uh, let's see, I'm, start, I'm trying to remember which, if they usually put these in silo, I think they do, I think first and I think first cut is goes to the silo. Well, we'll we'll do some bales of this, and then I think next we will just put it in the silo, which basically just mow it and then window it and then collect it with the forage harvester, forager thingy. Thingy is not technical technical term by the way. What else? It's Friday when I'm recording this. I think this goes out Saturday morning. I'm really tired after a week at work. Got one more week, then it's I got vacation. One more week, and then four weeks of vacation, followed by one week of work, and then followed by two more weeks of parent, parent, parental leave, which I'm really looking forward to. By the way, we're going to do four rows at a time. Four rows at a time. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. So maybe I should switch it around and do. Maybe I should do bales for the first cut. I'll do the second cut. It doesn't matter. I think you I think you do it the opposite way. I think the first cut it goes into the silo, and the rest of them goes into bales. If I could, rem I could cr misremember, but I think so.
Um, yeah, I think so. But I'm I'm not I'm definitely not sure about that. I haven't put out well, Kotlin Farm put out a few videos, but not a huge amount. So. It's going quite fast. I'm actually, keeping, like, the good part about the mower is that it goes really fast, so we're pretty much keeping steady speed with that one, almost. It, I, it, we get, we're catching it slightly because it's, it has to turn the same amount of times, or, the, or actually more times because it moves only a little bit of the field at a time. But so Cotton Farmer uses that setup, sort of that setup with a mower, so. That's pretty realistic. See, so I use course play for the mower, which is understandable. Well, I could do it by hand, but I figured we sort of got help doing these these fields. Because they're big. No, they're not big. In real life they this is nothing for a farmer. I'm thinking. They're, they're, hor they're horses. Sorry. The cows are doing fine. They got fed them. It's nice to be late spring here. We'll probably hopefully get three cuts out of this. First cut, second cut, third cut. So a lot of work during this time at the farm. First we need to do the mowing and the tethering and the windrowing, collecting and all of that. And then we also have to need, to need to fertilize the fields again. To get them ready for the next cut. I don't know if you do that in between, in real life, if you do that in between cuts. I would think you would do it. So probably get, get a higher yield. But uh, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, I w did um, try out the maps I got suggested by Luke and uh, David. So I think it was Luke who suggested uh, the game stick. And I think Dave. Turn this. Um, I think Luke suggested game stick, uh, sting and. David suggested a Hopfach map. So I tried them out, both of them. Uh, Hopfach is gigantic. It's like 1.8 gigabyte, I think. So and that's pr it was a cool, actually, both are very cool map. Um, Gamesty was a cool map, and Hopfach was a really cool map. Um, I think I liked uh, Hopfach more on the account of it being so bigger, so much bigger. But the problem was that the so the setup for for the game, because you would um, the thing is you started out with fifteen thousand in the bank account, no vehicles at all, and you had a um, hundred thousand in loans, which is like if I don't have any vehicles and I don't own any farm because you didn't own any farm either. Why do I have fifteen? <laughs> why have a hundred thousand uh, loan? doesn't make sense to me. So, um, if I if I if I were to do a let's play on that one, I would need definitely need to cheat because there's no way. You, you, well, I could borrow money, but I don't think it's, it's very fair. Fair is not the correct term, but I don't think it's 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 weird that you would start out having a big loan. I, I could say I just could, sort of could. Settle or accept that you would um, would maybe not 
well, you have any vehicles when you start out it's like uh, actually starting out farming you had no money um, and you would have to take a bank account a uh, bank loan to to buy vehicles and start out and um, buy a farm which was around 200,000 250,000 grand I think um, which I, is fair enough but then you wouldn't have a loan of 100,000 and I'm pretty sure that seems to be the default game setting so it doesn't matter how you do you always start out with 15 grand and 100,000 loans which is weird but then you usually own some sort of land where you can justify having a loan because you that's um, the money you have this here we'll go to the next field which I think is over here somewhere and to go through our cow field here Lots of getting out in, in. I guess that's the way it is in in a, in a UK based farm in real life. Uh, it's very different from Swedish based farms, which don't have these these settings set up. Slayer. Very close to here. Okay, so we'll unfold that and then we need to set this up. This is field 21. So field 21. It's going to have to be Then we go the east, go westly direction, do three, four headlands, and we'll go start those first and we'll go opposite direction. I think this will work. Okay. There's the starting location. Actually we'll do that like this. We'll go here and we'll go first nearest port first people full and we go there and I'm so I set this up so it is offset two and a half meters to the left which fits this oh it's a weird start what did uh oh well sorry so far okay so finish this off so I'm um, I'm switching it so I'm gonna do first bailing first cut with bailing bales which I think would be not the way you do it in real life but and that's probably a very reasonable reason why you wouldn't do it this way Really dirty tractor. Well, since we don't need these, these tools, we'll just set it up here. We'll leave it here, otherwise, I will just stack them in a way so I could use them. I don't know what sort of windrow a Cotland farmer ha actually uses, so that could be some on this type of windrower. But we'll we'll go for this one, the default the default one, which is nice. And 
sufficiently. I, I think it's sufficient for these kind of fields. Not gigantic, so I don't think you would use something gigantic. nice. I should probably record this. I should start recording it from the beginning. No. Here. Oh. I should miss this part of mowing. I don't know why. Oh, it's kind of sloppy on me, but hey, well, it's fine. So that's mowing away there. That's kind of cool. Oh, drifting off. Sorry. So we'll start with, either we'll just go around the field in circles for all of this, or we'll, we'll do some sort of headland system and then go inside. I'll probably go around turn, I think we'll go like this. Oh, actually the straighter is, is nice too. But some sort of headland, uh, this is the headland, and then we might uh, switch to more like a straight line. Maybe we should use GPS. Do you have a GPS installed? We don't have GPS installed, so okay, we won't use the GPS. We'll just round drive around this way. And try to get straight lines, maybe. Here, yeah, that won't happen. So what are your plans for the weekend? Are you going to do something in nice, interesting, fun, spending time with family, playing games, or what's on in your life? God, I sound weird. I sound like a radio. Well, except my voice. But Oh, I got some interesting criticism on a movie I made, uh, on Air, an Airsoft movie, where someone wrote in Swedish, uh, your English, me too. It's like, what? Not like me too in English, but in Swedish. It's like, I have no idea what that means. Sometimes the feedback I get is totally uncomprehensible. And I go like, should I remove this? Should I keep it? I don't know. I, don't, I can't understand what the person is trying to say, but maybe I should keep it? Remove it? I don't, I don't know. So I and I got some um, feedback on a, on a video there the other day, uh, which made no sense. I I have no idea what the person wanted. I got some the other day too on another on a farming simulator video. I think it was the same thing. It's like, oh, I don't understand. Also, I found a new problem with the YouTube channel is that on my older videos, which you probably recognize, and it's just maybe to some extent today too, because I'm not the most um, fluent the best pronunciator when it comes to English, but um, sometimes I get some uh, criticism, which is nice that people take the time to write uh, on on this page um, about my my language, which is fair enough. I I don't understand. I'm not a native speaker, and 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 usually people don't comment on my accent; they comment on stuff like uh, <coughs> my being sometimes I don't speak very articulate very well so and I don't know that I'm trying to hopefully I've gotten better at it but anyway so I got some feedback on a old movie I put out on um, explain review that someone said I was mumbling it's like yeah m that is sort of my the way I speak and I try to articulate but uh, sometimes, and especially on the older videos where I had a really bad microphone and stuff. So, and I, I, if I had a lot of time and wanted to, I could probably re-record those videos. But I don't have that sort of time or will. So, and people go like, "Oh, you really suck," and it's like, mm, "Okay, thank you for the feedback. Don't know what to do. I'm not going to record this video and." 
and I had a really bad microphone, and yes, I do sometimes speak very unclear, but I try to work on it. So it's interesting how people perceive stuff, and and I don't really know exactly what to do about it. To be true, to be honest. But I, think I do appreciate feed feedback. Sometimes it's hard. Usually I get good feedback, but sometimes I get really negative feedback. Uh, and some people do comment and write stuff that I could use. Well, you need to do this, you should do this instead. Or I think you should do this. Which is really fair enough and really nice and uh, constructive. Some people just write stuff that sort of on the surface sounds mostly mean. Uh, I can't hear this. Uh, someone wrote once that this was a complete waste of my my life watching this video for ten minutes. And and my first response was was why did you just stop watching it then? You must have by like after five minutes you must have figured out that it wasn't it was crap. Maybe it was crap. I don't know. Uh, I can't say it wasn't crap, but. I don't understand why you wouldn't watch it for ten more minutes, uh, five more minutes, if you discovered it was crap after five. It couldn't be like you discovered it was crap after after, after ten minutes. It's nice that it gave gave me the chance to try to prove it would be better, but if it hasn't improved, maybe it just won't get better. So that's one thing. Uh, I, I, I remember actually asking that person in what way I could improve my video. And he had some good constructive feedback, but it started out really was sort of rude. And I understand that's the feeling. Like. So, but sometimes I feel on online, not everyone, certainly not the, my followers here, because you don't usually write mean stuff. But you, sometimes the written language doesn't really hold the same sort of nuances, nuances as nuances, nuances, I don't know, as, uh, say, the spoken language, which means that it has its limits, and sometimes I try to remember not writing certain stuff, even though I might feel stuff when I see something, I, I don't write it, because I know that it, it can't, can't really mimic the same sort of uh, what I mean in real life, or what I would say to some to say to a person because there were probably a lot of stuff that people write you wouldn't say in that way or maybe you wouldn't even say it at all if you met that person so I tried to f try to live by the rule that I wouldn't write something on the internet to someone that I wouldn't be able to say in real life to them in that way and still I'm really careful because I do understand you lose a lot of nuances I have a lot, a lot of a lot of work. Here. Uh, a lot of people that end up and on my desk or children's that end up my desk have divorced parents because we do know that from research that uh, the level of conflict when it comes to divorce is a really good predictor of if things are going to go bad for that kid in the future. So the higher level of conflicts, the bad worse it is. Basically. Or is it? It's the risk factor. Anyway, um, so a lot of people, uh, parents end up, parents and their children end up on my desk because they have these um, sometimes violent, but mostly e even if it's not physical violence, it's psychological violence uh, involved towards each other or the ex, and they m and basically usually boils down to the conflict or the reason why they got divorced or separated, but they still have a problem because they have high levels of conflict and sometimes I do feel that it's well, mostly it's, it's from their lack of ability to com communicate in a proper way so they will write text messages or they will send emails which is understandable if you don't want to have something to do with your ex-wife or ex-husband or ex-girlfriend or so um, you would like to have as little as possible to do with them but that's that's the problem if you have children you can't really um, 
can't really do it in that way. You need to have the right level of communication to be, be able to be parents together, because you are parents together, for your children. So it doesn't really matter, from my point of view, what you feel about that one. You have to communicate at the right level for what's needed when it comes to your children. Different children have different needs. And sometimes text messages doesn't really, or emails, doesn't really facilitate that. And that's a lot of, when it comes, then, then stuff, stuff gets misunderstood. And think it gets totally blown out of proportion and that's not a really good thing and then get the conflict gets worse and then the children suffer because they do suffer from conflicts between parents they suffer even though we live together I, n I notice on my children that when we argue me and my fiance they that does affect them and we spend a lot of time talking we spend a lot of time talking to them afterwards after we had a conflict about what happened and how we feel and why we were mad at each other and w how we sorted things out, especially the sorting out part. I think that's that's one of the things I look for in my job. If parents have their bill, not that they argue, they, people can argue and they can argue verbally and I don't, I don't think people should hit each other or try to avoid at least, but uh, because it b brings sort of an inequali inequality to the relationship. But, um, I don't care if people really argue loudly, even though I know this research shows that that's really affect affects children too. But I think that's pretty normal. People argue in relationships. You sometimes disagree, and sometimes you argue about it. So that's fair enough. I don't think you can do so, so much about that. I don't think the relationships where you don't argue is good for children either, because they will grow up and meet other people, and they need to know how to argue. And firstly, and that was my point they really need to know how to solve their disagreements. And that's, for me, is a really uh, important thing in my relationship to my children, that I want to learn, teach them how to solve their disagreements um, in pretty orderly fashion. And uh, sometimes you get really mad and, and emotional and you scream things that you don't really mean. And then you have to take responsibility for that and you have to talk about it after or af afterwards and that sort of stuff. But then you... Um, so l the thing I look for in the families I meet is the ability to s first solve conflicts, which is very important. You need to be able to do that. And uh, whether you live together or not, don't live together. But then also, if you show that to your children. <coughs> because I think that's really important the ability to be able to solve conflicts. Now I've been rambling away about my work for a good 20 minutes, no, 15 minutes maybe. And we're getting towards the end of this episode. So next episode we're going to go do some bailing, or we'll continue with those ones. But well, I think we're going to go bail, bail this, because I want to show you the bailer. Not the bailer, I want to show you the tanko wrapper. Actually, I'm going to show you one. Um, where is it? Here. So it's over here. I can get to it. And so, no. And I need to, need to be get this out of the way first. So this one, it's over here. I think it's really cool. So press X to unfold it and then you basically just bring it over here and wrap the base. We have a bail here somewhere. Here, see, we get this on here. And just drive up to it. Oh. on there and then it wraps it so I chose some black like uh, wrapping on this one so basically you could load these up and then you just go and set them where you want them 
it's not really in this is the hard part because it's not that I'm not that good at this part so like so and you press y to unload Should be able to do this. Oh, come on, unload. Oh, this is not going to work. I missed. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, so this is basically the idea of it. You wrap like that. So, and then you do the rest, and so on. Uh, and so I think it's a pretty cool thing. You can wrap it at the same time. So do the rest. So I might do some stuff off green and we'll, next time we'll do some bailing or I have done some bailing or something. So this has been a let's play on the Cotland slash Colbert Park farm for farming simulator 17. I'm Andy. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this episode, please hit the like button, leave a comment or share. Have a great day. Bye bye.